Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This time of the year is when many year 11s are learning about markets. I've got videos introducing this topic and exploring the concept of demand, so you might want to watch those videos first. The links will be in the description below. Previously, we've established that a market is the situation where buyers and sellers meet for the purpose of exchange. A typical market model in economics includes demand and supply. Demand represents the consumer's interests, while supply represents the producer's. That's what we'll be focusing on today. Students often find supply trickier to understand compared to demand. Something that could help while covering this topic is to remember to think from the producer or firm's perspective. Let's start with a definition. Supply is defined as the quantity of a product that firms are willing and able to produce when offered certain prices at a given point in time. Typically, as the price of a product increases, firms will offer a higher supply. This is called the law of supply, and here are two reasons for this positive correlation. First is the profit motive. As the price increases, it becomes more profitable for businesses to increase their output. Secondly, new entrants coming into the market. Higher prices may incentivize other businesses to enter the market, therefore increasing the quantity supplied. Next, let's talk about the influences on supply. The first influence that we should look at is the price of the good itself. As we've established with the law of supply, increasing the price will cause quantity supply to rise. We call this an expansion in supply, and it's illustrated as a movement along the curve to the right. The opposite is when we lower the price of the good itself, causing a contraction in supply and a movement to the left. Price offered for the good itself is the only influence that causes expansions, contractions, or movements along the curve. All the other influences cause shifts in the whole curve, which we'll call increases or decreases in supply. It's very important to use the right terminology to maximize your marks in exams. The first influence that can cause a shift in the whole supply curve is the cost of production. If producing the good became more costly, the supply curve would shift to the left. This is because if the price offered to producers stayed the same while the cost of production went up, the producer can make less profit, so they'll be willing to produce a lower quantity. Costs of production are often determined by the cost of resources or the factors of production, such as land, labor, capital, and enterprise. For example, if minimum wages went up, driving up the cost of labor, supply would decrease. So conversely, if cost of production went down, producers can afford to increase their supply. For example, if the price of raw materials went down, producers would be happy to supply a higher quantity or lower their prices. This is shown by the supply curve shifting to the right. Related to this influence is the availability and the cost of resources. Think of the most expensive food that you could buy. Lobster, caviar, truffle, dry-aged A-grade Wagyu steak. Why are these so expensive? Because it's very hard to find or produce them. The more rare the product is, the more expensive it becomes. In 2011, Cyclone Yazi tore through Queensland's banana plantations, wiping out 90% of Australia's total production. Australian bananas became very scarce, so what happened to the supply curve? It shifted left, and bananas tripled in price. Also related to cost of production is the state of technology. Technological advancements can make production more efficient, lowering the cost of production. This again leads to an increase in supply. For example, the farming industry has implemented the use of technology that's made it more efficient to monitor and harvest crops. This means that farmers can produce larger quantities or reduce prices. It's a shift of the supply curve to the right. Our next influence is the number of suppliers. With more producers of the good, the market can offer a higher quantity. They often compete with lower prices too. This shifts the curve to the right. The price of alternative goods and services will influence supply as well. Imagine if you were a red apple farmer. If consumers started offering higher prices for green apples, you would shift the resources to supplying green apples instead. Your supply of red apples would decrease in response to the price of the alternative. Last influence in the syllabus to cover is expected future prices. Again, as an apple farmer, if you expect apple prices to increase later on, you would start planting apple trees immediately. By increasing your production, you are shifting your supply curve to the right. This is how lobster farmers manage the Chinese New Year rush every year. They expect that Chinese people will be having massive banquets and be willing to pay high prices for lobster at around February every year. So they increase the production throughout the year and have large quantities ready to supply. So these are the influences on supply. Let's go through a few examples to solidify what we've learned. Let's look at the supply of hand sanitizers. Very topical, right? 
How has the supply of hand sanitizer been influenced by these scenarios? Scenario number one, the price of hand sanitizer is rising. A rise in the price of the hand sanitizer itself would cause an expansion in the supply of hand sanitizer. Our second scenario, the government is subsidizing the production of hand sanitizers. This means that the cost of producing hand sanitizer goes down. This is a shift of the supply curve to the right. Third scenario, the cost of spray bottles has increased. This would increase the cost of production, so the supply curve shifts to the left. Scenario number four, customers are willing to pay a higher price for soap compared to hand sanitizers. Producers would shift their resources to soap instead, decreasing the supply of hand sanitizers. I hope I've made supply easier for you to understand. Next lesson we'll be going even deeper into supply by looking at the concept of price elasticity. Hit the subscribe button as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.